Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berto Warrior here. Hope you are doing well, my sister, my brother. Hope you had a super awesome Sabbath and a weekend as well. So did you take time out to study? Did you, uh, I was listening to a pastor. He said, did you, uh, are you receiving your PhD? And it uh, talks about, um, and peace. I, I go ahead and do something, uh, another topic on that. It talks about um, peace and then studying the Word of God. You get the peace of mind studying the Word of God. So this is like getting your PhD, my sister, my brother. And you are working with the Holy Spirit. And you know, it is late on planet Earth, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3.16. Hey, Heiko, what's going on, girl? What's going on? Heiko has um, two new friends, a boy and a girl. Two new dogs came, and so she's not very happy because there's two additional dogs here. She's not a very happy camper. So let us go ahead and um, pray first, and then we're going to have scripture reading. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message today. Father God, I ask you right now, Father God, that you will decrease me so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, scripture reading is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 5. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 5. And it says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. Okay, so let's go into our topic today. The overcomer's portion. Mm, the overcomer's portion. It says, Did not our Savior had something to overcome? Did not he kept up the battle with the prince of darkness until he was victor on every point? Then he left the work right in the hands of his followers. He have something, we have something to do. Have we not the overcoming portion to work out and, and gain the victory? Have we not to follow on steps by steps to know the Lord until we shall know his going forth are prepared as the morning? The light will shine forth until we come to the brighter light. We shall grasp it and go on and gather brighter lights from the oracles of God as your supplicants, the God of heaven. So Jacob was in snare. He defrauded his brother of his birthright. As he wrestled with Christ, his sins came up before him. And the angels wrestled with him and said, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And this is coming from Genesis chapter 32, verses 26. It says, will you do that? Will you wrestle with God at this morning until you know that he reveals himself to you? There are sins that afflict your souls. Your sin grieves you. Will you say, now, Lord, I must have pardon written um, opposite my name and wrestle and plead with God, laying hold upon the righteousness of Christ. He must save. I believe in him. I take him at his word. Now, brethren, what shall we do? Let me repeat that. Now, brethren, what shall we do? Jacob obtained the victory and his name was changed that day. It was when he prevailed with God. I am so thankful that God had made a way that we may have full and free salvation. We need not look at the shadow that Satan cast on our path. He should eclipse heaven and Jesus and the light and the power of heaven to us. And we kept talking of the power of Satan. But we need not talk of that. Isaiah present it this way. 
unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And this is coming from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6. Does not that say that I and my Father are one? Let me read that. So we're talking about Isaiah 9, chapter, chapter 9, verses 6. Does, does not that say that I and my Father are one? God help us, brethren, to wake up and stir ourselves now to do as much as the paralytic did, to do as much as the important, the important man did, as much as the one with the palsy arm did. They did just as they were told. God help us to believe on the Son of God and that he can save us to the utmost and we shall have everlasting life. But many of you act as though there wasn't enough animation in your souls to respond to the truth. Some of you act as though you thought Jesus were locked up in Joseph's new tomb. He is not there. He is risen from the dead. And we have a living Savior today who is making intercession for us. Then talk of his love. Talk of his power. Praise him. If you have a voice to say anything, talk of God. Talk of heaven. Talk of eternal, uh, eternal life. Let me go back. If you have a voice to say anything... Talk of God, talk of heaven, talk of eternal life. I have heard persons who in their homes would speak so loud that their neighbors could hear them. But they could get up in the meeting a mumble over a few words that could not be heard. You want to show that you have been learning in the school of Christ and that you have been making progress. With the heart, men believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. This is coming from Romans chapter 10, verses 10. How many believe the truth you have heard today? Do you want to go a few months before you will acknowledge there is light in it? Do you want to stop to reason it all out? Let me repeat that. Do you want to stop and to reason it all out? Mm. You will die before that time. Mm. So here's the three questions we have. Do you want to go a few months before you will acknowledge there is light in it? Do you want to stop to reason it all out? You will die before that time. So my sister, my brother, that is the conclusion of my topic today, the overcomers portion, okay? So on tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, we're going to go into believe because God says it. Mm. Believe because God says it. Okay, if we go to our doctor, our doctor says whatever, whatever, you know, you got this, you got this, here's the prescription. Okay, so we believe the doctor, right? We believe the doctor. We don't question the doctor. We do not question the doctor. I do. I don't know about you. But most people don't not, most people do not question the doctor. So whatever the doctor say, yes, doctor, I'll do this, do that, do that. Not realizing that that's a man. But when you read the word of God, we have to question this and have to question it. Well, you know what? I'm not quite sure. Is it did he really says this? No, no, no. I think he meant this. But when you go to the doctor, you don't question it, right? You, most people don't question it. So why are we questioning? the word of God. We need to stop my system, brother. We need to stop questioning the word of God and do what God says. So tomorrow we're going to believe because God says it. That is the topic for tomorrow. So may I share with you my devotion? Let me get got some water. I need to get some water. Let me see. Oh, I think I just locked this thing. Hold on. Yep, I sure did. Hold on. Okay, let me see. Lock it back down. Okay, here we go. Devotion time. Devotion time. It's so beautiful out here. It is so beautiful out here. The sun is out and it's a little bit warmer. 
here. It's a little bit warmer. And so the topic here, or the devotion, she say, draw with Christ, draw with Christ. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And this is coming from John 17, verses 17. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I ask for Father God to continue to take full control. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, it says, stimulation is the law of human nature. Simulation is the law of human nature. Satan works with untiring perseverance to use this law, obtained by God to be a power for good, to forward his plan. He seeks to blend together righteous and unrighteous principles in order that through this union, sin may lose its offensive appearance. He mixed the chaff with the wheat. The righteous should associate with the wicked only to restore the principle of truth, which have been almost wiped out. He who seeks to help and bless others must depend wholly upon the unseen, yet all essential supplies of grace and strength. He must cooperate with God if he would be successful in the saving the soul ready to perish. He must associate closely with the divine agency, drawing by faith the grace so much needed to resist the elements of unrighteousness. Christ saw Satan's pattering after heaven by the use of human association, thus extending the infection or the disease of evil, and he determined to make his church a resisting element. His people are not to borrow the forms and the custom of the world, but are to be in instant. No, Miss, Miss, let me go back. Let me go back. His people are not to borrow the forms and the custom of this world, but are to be instinct with the principle which make the church on earth a symbol of the church in heaven, a channel through which heaven's rich blessings can flow. Untold Untold good may be accomplished by the righteous working with and for the wicked. But too often, those who ought to lead sinners to God do not draw with Christ. Church members are under a solemn pledge to form character, difference in every way from the characters of the worldlings. If a change does not take place in them prior to their union with the church, there is, there is danger that, though they have joined the church, they will simulate with the whirlings. Satan triumphs when he sees the leaven of the world working in the church to the destructions of his purity and holiness. It is God's plan that in his church, heavenly influence shall be reinforced and assimilated by the corporation of the members with him. His people are to increase in strength and the efficiency, knowing that the atmosphere which surrounds the souls of righteousness, believers in the same as the atmosphere in the heaven of purity and light and love. Through Christian fellowship, they are to form their character, simulating them to the characters of Christ. According to their faith will be their Christ-like meekness and lowliness. As God's people seek to fulfill this plan, they are answering the prayer of Christ. Sanctify them to thy truth. Thy word is truth. So that concludes my topic, my devotion, my sister, my brother. Draw with Christ. And this is coming from John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we need to study, 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 my sister, my brother. We need to continue to study the word of God. Because remember, we need to be elevating from one level to the next level. And as we get more information, as we study the word, we get more information, we get more light. So we need to be increasing on a daily basis, reaching higher and higher, higher. Remember, God's standards is high. 
And only way we can reach that standard, is my sister and brother, we have to be cooperating with the Lord and working with Him. So we have to uh, surrender our life to Him and allow Him to take full control. That's the only way that we will be able to reach the standard of Christ. Remember, God the Father is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. Jesus Christ is holy. And as holy being, in order for us to be standing in uh, his presence, we as individuals must be holy people. And being holy meaning 24 hours a day. Yes, we Christians, we fall down, but we get back up. We confess our faults to one another, right? We confess our sins only to, to God, but because we are searching our souls moment by moment, we see or we might be thinking certain uh, thoughts, right? Maybe negativity or thinking about, you know, what you want to say to so-and-so, she say this to you or he says this to you, right? So it's, it's negative, right? So if we dwell on the negative, on, on the negativity, we're going to get more of that. But that's not what God, God doesn't live there. He wants us to be have a pure mind. And how can we do that? We have to be studying the Word. We have to be meditating on the Word. We have to take the Scripture and eat it, meaning that we take maybe just a portion, maybe one uh, scripture, one verse, and you memorize that, or you dwell on maybe one word, peace, love, kindness, right? And as you dwell on that, and you you searching your soul moment by moment, you know, Lord, forgive me for thinking this. Lord, forgive me for saying this to so-and-so. But remember, if you said something to your sister or brother, you went before you got it right with them, because it said, the, the scripture says, if you, if you have an ought against your brother, you go to them, right? You leave your offering at, at the altar. You go and make it right with your brother or sister. And then you come and I'll give your offering to God. So we need to make it right with one another first. And then we go and ask the Lord to forgive us, to wash us and make us white in the snow. And you know what? The only way we can do that, my sister and brother, everything, even coming to repentance, is Christ that leads us into repentance. It's Christ that allow me to do good. It's Christ that allow me to say uh, something nice to someone else because there's no good thing in my, in myself there's no good thing in you so it's because of the love of jesus that we are able to say lord i surrender my life take full control and that's when you gave him permission and that's when he will um take over but yes we do fall down you know we don't make it we don't do the right thing as parents we don't do the right things and then when your kids get to a certain age it's like <gasps> i should have spent more time in this particular area with that child or i should have spent more time in that area with that child but at the t end of the day the child is grown and all you can do lord forgive me for not spending enough time in this area forgive me for not doing this and that's all we can do as parents but as we continue to learn about the love of Jesus. We got to continue to move from one level to the next level. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So here is my my um, hymn. In Christ there is no east nor west. In Christ there is no east nor west. In him no south or north. We are but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord, closely binding all mankind. Join hands, then brothers of the faith, whatever your race may be. Who serves my father as a son is surely kin to me. Here's the last verse. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him meet south and north. All Christ-like souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ, there is no east nor west. I tell you, my sister and brother, there's so much. If you go out in nature, you can see the wonderful blessings that God has bestowed upon us. We just need to be more mindful of God is working things out on our behalf. Doesn't matter what you're going through, my sister, my brother, God is seeing whatever you're going through. It could be having financial issue, it could be having a relationship issue, it could be having, you know, uh, health issues, right? Maybe someone, your loved one just died. My sister and brother, God sees everything. He knows everything. And he has given you uh, enough trials and tribulation for that one day for right now right now so we just need to say okay what do i need to do now and whatever that is you need to make that first step 
make the first step my sister and brother and you see the way will be open i know sometimes sometimes as as we as um, believers as children of god we say like, well lord i see i got plan a i got plan b i got plan c right but you know now which step do i make my sister and brother until you make the first step and then God part, remember the children of Israel as they was crossing the sea, they had to make the first step, right? And then the, the, then God parted the sea. But if you don't make your, your, your step or make a decision, I'm going to go this way, how you expect the Lord to intercede on your behalf, which you don't even know, you're so confused, right? So my, there's no confusion as with the, um, being a child of God. If you have confusion, my sister and brother, it's meaning that you have not taken the time out to really look at all the... the um, the decision making that you have to do you know put it on paper my sister my brother put it on paper it will become clear which direction you need to, to to go to but you know if you read the bible god says go right then you go right if god said go left then you go left so we just got to be very mindful of who we're listening to because there's so many voices that will get us confused so just stop for a moment so he said, be still and know that I am God. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message today. I thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that I can hear the birds are singing, Father God. The birds are flying up in the tree, having a great time, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all the animals that we can look at, Father God, and just smile. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a mighty God that you sit high, you look low, Father God, and you see our individual need, and you have already provided a solution, Father God, and we thank you, Father God. We thank you. So, Father God, if I have done anything that was not pleasing or I said anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, I ask you that you'll wash me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, Father God, and once you have done that, Father God, fill me up with the power with the peace with the love the joy that we need with the strength that we need to continue to serve the father god we thank you we thank you father god for giving us another opportunity to get our lives in order father god we forever give you all the praise the honor and glory in jesus name i have prayed amen and amen okay my sister and brother thank you guys so much for stopping by thank you thank you thank you so if this was a blessing to you can you hit the like button and then you can make a comment, and then I come back with the comment later. Uh, make a comment, then you can uh, hit, hit the share button. Remember, sharing is caring. Then you can follow me over on YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And then whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And I thank you, thank you for doing that, my sister and brother. And I don't know if, I don't know if any of you guys uh, listened to my video I had uh, yesterday evening. When I was telling you, I just broke a nail. When I was telling you, I was um, painting, right? And I decided that I did not like the paint. I was the paint that the paint I was doing because I think it was like the second time I had changed the paint. So you guys, I did not like that paint. And you know what? You, you know what happened. So as the paint dried, and I was in my office, and I came and I was looking and looking and looking, and it dried up. <gasps> I fell in love with the color. I fell in love with the color. So I remember I told you I had to go to the. <clears throat> to the um, store to buy some paint. So I went there this morning and got some more paint. So I got the same color and it's like a, it's like a cream color and it go perfect with the other color I have on the wall. So it's perfect. So I'm going to do that within two rooms, that particular color, that cream color and do it in two rooms. And then I'm changing it in my third room. And then the, I'm hoping that for, uh, for the two rooms I bought like, um, I think like 10 gallons. So I'm hoping that that will be enough to do the other room. So I think yesterday, I wasn't sure if I'm gonna do three rooms or four rooms, but I made up my decision last night that I'll do all four rooms, all four rooms, all four rooms. Somebody might say, brother, why would you wanna do all that work? Girl, just go ahead and hire somebody. Listen, my sister, but I live in the country. I live in the country. I know you in the city, you might have be able to find uh, individuals quickly. But even the, I remember when I was in the city, I remember I still had the, had, the, had the issue of finding good workers. Good workers are hard to find. And it's so it is in the country. Finding a good worker is hard. And we, I do know about two, but they are so, um, how would you say, they're, they're not available. They are booked up five months, six months in advance five, six months in advance, so then you have to make sure that you uh, get on their um, get on their list. And sometimes you want certain things, when you think about it, you want it done like right now, like yesterday, like microwave, you know? And so if I want that microwave experience, <laughs> I got to do it myself. 
I gotta do it myself. So, but I love painting. It's just that you know, it's it's the preparation that gets me. It's the preparation. So much preparation goes into that. So I've got my paint. So I've got my brush. Got I brought some more brushes. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be finished. Not finished, but I think it's going to take me like a couple three days or so to get those two rooms done. Because as I'm moving, I'm moving stuff from one side, you know, and then painting and then moving them back. But then actually, I'm gonna have to move everything out because there's some other projects I'm going to be doing later on. So with that, my sister and brother, so that's what I'm doing. See, I'm busy, busy, busy. I just wish that, um, just wish what? To wish what? I, what do I wish? I just thank the Lord that he gives me the strength to do what I need to do to get the projects done in a timely fashion and keep my mind clear and keep giving me the peace of mind because I do not like things all over the place. So that is my issue. I do not like things all over the place. And right now, things are all over the place. And it's like, mm, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. So that is this, that's, that's my challenge. So while I'm going to do it, I'm going to put on maybe some, um, listen to one of my pastors or something so I could keep my mind clear and focus, focus, focus. And knowing that my mess is only temporary. It's not a full time. Temporary, temporary, maybe for maybe a week or so. And then everything will be back hopefully in order. So thank you, my sister and brother, for stopping by today. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. But before you go, remember, I have not got a hug. So may I have a hug? So here we go. One, two, one more. Three. Thank you, thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, love you, love you. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.